Hi, Mark Hayward here. I'm a world yo-yo champion. I'm gonna teach you how to yo-yo and your first five easy tricks. We are gonna start at the very beginning of yo-yoing. So if you've never even held a yo-yo before, that's totally fine. We're gonna start with the basic up and down gravity pull and move on to other tricks. The tricks we're covering today are the throw down, the sleeper, walk the dog, and the forward pass. Everything we do today is going to be based on using a bearing responsive yo-yo. It'll spin a long time, but it'll come back up when you pull the string. If you need a yo-yo and you're not sure where to start, I've got a link in the video description. You also want to make sure that you have a slip knot because you don't want to lose or break your yo-yo. Every yo-yo string comes with a solid loop at the end of the string. And if I put this loop on my finger as it is, it can fall off. I can break my yo-yo. I can lose it. That's no good. So you want to make sure you've got a slip knot. The way it works, the way you make the slip knot is you open up the solid loop at the end of the string. You fold the string over, pull the string through that loop, pull it all the way through, and put your finger in the new loop you just created. It goes right on your middle finger just below the end knuckle. Put your yo-yo on your finger, make sure it's all wound up, and let's get started. The very first trick is what most people consider to just be basic yo-yoing. It's called the gravity pull. Gravity pulls it down, you pull it back up again. So it's a push, pull, catch. You wanna pull on the string before the yo-yo gets to the bottom. That gives it a little bit more speed so it can get all the way back up to your hand. So push, pull, catch. It can be with one or two hands. Now that you can do the gravity pull, I don't want you to ever do it again. From now on, I want you to throw the yo-yo the cool way the power throw or throw down. There are four steps for this, but first you got to make sure you've got the yo-yo in your hand correctly. You have your palm up, you have the string going from your finger to the top of the yo-yo. You should have this little triangle there. If the string is going down underneath, when you throw it, you'll get a sick helicopter and that's no good. When you do the four steps, it's a good idea to do a practice throw one or two times before you do a real throw. So you hold your hand out in front of you, cock your wrist, lift your elbow, pretend throw, don't actually throw it, then turn your hand over. For most people doing the pretend throw twice is the right number, but you can do the pretend throw as many times as you need to until it feels good. And then when you're ready, do the throw for real. Cock your wrist, lift your elbow, throw, then turn and catch. The two main problems that people have with the throw down is either they don't throw it hard enough and it doesn't come all the way back up, or when they throw it, it spins at the end of the string. When that happens, just give it a sharp tug and it should come back. Make sure to spend the time to practice this until it really feels good. This is the basis of yo-yoing, so you wanna make sure you've got it right before you move on. Now we're gonna get into what people really wanna know when they start yo-yoing, how to get a sleeper or a spinner. So it's the same thing as we just learned with the throwdown, with some modifications so you can get it to spin a long time. You still hold the yo-yo in your palm with the string going from your finger to the top of the yo-yo. You're gonna do the same steps as the throwdown, except you'll cock your wrist, you'll lift your elbow. You wanna make sure to get your elbow up above your nose because that way you can use the big muscles in your shoulders and not just the smaller muscles in your arm. You're gonna swing your arm forward and when you throw it, you wanna throw the yo-yo aiming out about six feet in front of you and then let it swing behind you while keeping your wrist loose. So elbow up above your nose, throw and swing. And then when it's time to get it to come back, give it a sharp tug back to your hand. When you first start out, it won't snap back up so quickly. It's a good success if you can get it to spin even for a second or two and come back up most of the way to your hand. And as you practice it more, you'll get better at it. The most common problem when trying to get a good fast sleeper is that the yo-yo spins at an angle. Unfortunately, this is user error. You have to really focus on throwing the yo-yo perfectly vertically, straight up and down when it comes off your hand. It's just the way our bodies are made. It's really easy to throw it off at an angle and then it spins at an angle and the longer it spins at an angle, the worse it gets and eventually you can't do any tricks. The other problem people have is that it comes right back up immediately. They can't get the yo-yo to sleep at the bottom. There's a lot of things that could be causing this, but the main thing to focus on is that you're keeping your wrist loose and that you throw it forward 
which spreads the shock of the yo-yo hitting the end of the string over a wider area, makes it less likely to come back up. However, you also need to make sure there's no funk inside your yo-yo. If you have a whole bunch of hair or maybe an entire carpet in there, it's not gonna spin very well. So make sure your yo-yo is in good shape, make sure it's assembled correctly, keep everything loose with your wrist when you throw it. Another very real reason why the yo-yo may not sleep at the end is if you don't have a good quality yo-yo. Early on, I recommended getting one that is a ball bearing responsive yo-yo. I've got a link in the video description for a yo-yo that I recommend, but if you're using one that's from the dollar store or from the free bin somewhere, chances are it doesn't work. It probably won't sleep even if I were to use it. So make sure you have good equipment. Another big factor that isn't as important with the ball bearing yo-yo is the string. With a fixed axle yo-yo, the old school ones that our grandparents used, the string adjustment, how twisty the string was, was really important. Even with a ball bearing yo-yo, the string adjustment can make a difference. If you have a bad case of spaghetti string, chances are this is gonna affect your sleeper. It's a good idea to get rid of the spaghetti string. You can do it either by letting the yo-yo hang down and spin until it stops, or much faster, you take the string off your finger, pull the string down, let it do its little hula dance. And when it's finished, you're ready to go. Now that you can throw a good, fast, long sleeper, we get to pretty much everyone's favorite yo-yo trick, walk the dog. The way that you do it is actually fairly straightforward, but there are a couple important pointers. First of all, you have to have a good, long, fast spinner. Once you get it sleeping for a long time, you throw it down and you want to make sure that the string is either vertical or leaning slightly out in front of you. You set the yo-yo down gently, let it walk for a little bit and give it a sharp tug to come back. In a contest, you only have to walk the length of your foot. So that's a really good attainable goal. But an important thing to know is that if the string is leaning backwards when I start walking it, it won't walk because the reason that it is able to do the trick is that the yo-yo moving forward maintains tension on the string. But once the tension is released, it'll wind back up again. So if I start walking it behind me with the string leaning back, as soon as it starts moving, there's slack in the string, yo-yo winds up. With Walk the Dog, the surface you walk on is very important. This floor is great for it, dense carpet works great, but something really grippy like concrete doesn't work that well, and it also tears up your yo-yo. But if it's too grippy, like rubber, phew, the yo-yo just flies away. So pick the right surface and you'll have more success. I know that in part because I have the Guinness World Record for the furthest distance to walk the dog. Check it out, 2020 book. Once you've practiced a little bit, you can make walk the dog even more fun. Go a long ways. Or go right into another trick, like rock the baby. Now it's time to learn the forward pass one of the coolest beginner tricks there is. The steps for forward pass are, you hold the yo-yo in your hand the same way as the throwdown. You want the string going from your finger to the top of the yo-yo. You should have this little triangle there. You keep your hand open, turn your arm around behind you, still palm up, and just rest the yo-yo in your hand. Don't even hold on to it. Because what you're gonna do is pull your arm out from underneath it. You're dropping the yo-yo, you're not holding on to it at all. This is the main thing that people mess up. Keep your elbow locked, just move your shoulder. Swing your arm forward quickly, turn your palm up to catch it. Let's talk about troubleshooting this trick. There are a couple things that people tend to do wrong. One of them is that they hold on to the yo-yo and that tends to make it go crazy and it's hard to catch it again. The other one is people bend their elbow and when you do that, you get this sort of weird thing and you don't get much power or control. So you wanna make sure that you're not holding on to the yo-yo, keep that elbow locked, swing your arm forward like you're swinging a bucket of water, turn your palm up to catch it. Earlier I mentioned that you need to not hold on to the yo-yo when it's sitting back here on your hand. And I mean that literally. So if I were to take the string off my finger and do the trick, where do you think the yo-yo is gonna go? Most people would say it's gonna fly off into the distance, but I'm literally not holding on to it. I just pull my hand out from underneath it. So if I do the trick normally with the yo-yo not attached, it just lands on the floor right there. So it's important that you're just swinging your arm out from underneath the yo-yo. 
The other thing that people often do wrong is they just don't swing hard enough. It can be a little scary. The yo-yo is coming flying back at you, but you want to swing hard enough that the yo-yo has enough speed to come all the way back to your hand. If you do it too softly, it doesn't matter how good your technique is. You won't be able to catch it. So make sure you give it enough oomph, put some mustard on it so it can come all the way back. Another thing that can be a problem is the yo-yo can sleep out at the end of the string and then suddenly come back when you're not ready. Uh, this depends a little bit on your yo-yo. Some of them will do this more, some will do it less. Uh, the, the best way to deal with it is to be confident and decisive in your actions. So when you throw it out, give it enough speed, but also you can sometimes pull back a little bit to keep it from spinning at the end of the string. The other thing that can make that happen is if you're doing too much of a circle with this trick. You want it to be as much of a straight line out and back as you can make it. But if you start really low and swing it up, then that's going to make it spin at the end of the string. With the future trick around the world, that's what you want. But right now, try to keep it just linear and low, below your waist, and that'll help it not spin at the end of the string. If you want to learn more yo-yo tricks, I've got a whole bunch of tutorials of all different kinds, so check them out and you can learn more tricks. From here, check out my five more easy tricks video. That'll give you the next progression in this series. If this video helped you out, please give it a like and subscribe to see all my upcoming videos.